2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. 2NURFM 103.7. Every fortnight we have a look at what's happening in the world of education. Probably our second last chat uh, with uh, John Fischetti because mate, we're almost coming up to the time of year yeah, where, right. where teachers get about 18 weeks holiday. <laughs> Don't, isn't that right? Isn't no, that how it works? Not really. Not really? There's at least eight weeks. There's at least a couple of good weeks in there. Fair enough. You get a decent run. Yeah. All right. Today, we want to have a look at um, some data that's coming out internationally and kind of the way that that data, well, the amount of countries flown into this international data set has changed, which may potentially be changing the results or at least how we perceive those results. Yeah. So the hottest topic in education today, hot off the press, is the results of PISA, the Program for International Student Assessment that was developed by the Organization for Economic and Cooperative Development, OECD. Those are all terms I know, Mark, you've heard along the, mm. the way in the last last 20 years, there's been this sense, could we find inter international benchmarks to determine how we're going and calibrating across the world? Began with just a few countries, it's now 79, and the results in reading, in science, and in maths have now come out. And some other data from surveys of 15-year-olds. This is 15-year-olds, about 600,000 sampled across the world. This isn't every 15-year-old. That's year <laughs> nine, typically. <laughs> some places, year eight, um, students, and how did they go? And over the last 20 years of doing this, we now have some data to say you're doing better or worse than before and which countries are on top. So back in the early days of this this modelling, how many countries were in were in the, yeah, the there survey were, sample? There were less than a dozen. Okay. And in those times, Finland was the one that came up near the top and they got all the educational buzz because they actually don't have formal assessments. They've blown up their curriculum. They actually, instead of investing in assessments, they invest in teachers. And so everybody wanted to learn from Finland. Things have changed a little bit, but that's primarily now because 79 countries are on board. So the more countries that come in, that's going to bring a lot of different type of education models in um, and how they yeah. do that sort of business. Um, where does where has Australia moved in terms of where we were in the original setting and as those other countries have been added? So in reading and science, Australia 16 and 17 this year. And relatively, that would be similar to where we were at the beginning of these instruments. If we did a pickup basketball game in the gym at school or in the park, if there was a game going to happen, and there were only nine or ten other people, you have a pretty good chance if it's a ten-person game to get picked, even if you're not very mm -hmm. good. You're going to be picked. So Australia was in the top seven or eight early on. Now it's number 16 or 17, but now we have 79 countries and a lot of high-performing countries. So this year on board, China's in four places. They've broken China because Shanghai's its own province and own region, and so China's one. Two, three, and four. So Finland's down to six. Well, did they go down or up, or is it just because China's there? Because, as you might know, there's more gifted kids in China than Australia has kids. And simply because of the volume, the numbers, too. Yeah, you, you, yeah you know, exactly. Gonna be more. And they might tinker with the sampling, by the way. It's a little tricky to know how they determine which kids take the test. The worry That's I, only the swimmers. <laughs> the, <laughs> the worry that I have is in mass, mm -hmm. which is the first time now the country on average is below the OECD average. And that what that should be concerned, if year nine students are not up to speed in their mass, it pretty much takes them out of the innovation age because most of the stuff that we do to develop apps or to, to build new things in the AI and VR world involve algebraic concepts, algorithmic concepts. And so that should be a worry. And so I think you'll hear a lot of criticism and there'll be two like two parties, mm. two solutions. One will be double down on the basics, eliminate all the fluff. And the other will be, that didn't work, we need to try a different approach. And you'll see probably then that approach blame teachers for not being up to speed. So one will be, we need a pared down literacy, numeracy curriculum, back to basics, we do too much other stuff. The other will be, well, teachers aren't up to speed and maybe we need to do it a little different. I just come back to the initial thought that we've, we've more and more countries are getting into, therefore there is more data in and of itself. If you're going to measure yourself, are you not better to sort of measure against the best of the best? Otherwise, you're kind of potentially getting a false reading. Like if you right. were, if the top ten performing countries aren't in the test, um, you're yeah. kind of becoming the big fish in a that's, small that's pond, true. which you ne may not necessarily be getting the best outcomes for, in this case, some um, students. And, you know, the other false comparison, Mark, is that if we really want to compare with China, in lieu of netball, in lieu of swimming, in lieu of dance, you know what the kids do in China. They practice mm. math. I mean, they practice math before school, after school, summer. They do it Saturdays. They are in boot camp like an athlete training for a triathlon. But you realize that none of the major innovations in the world have come out of China. 
Facebook didn't come out of China. The DVD player mm. back in the day didn't. None of the stuff around Google, any of the things like Microsoft. If you look at like Google Maps, which were an Australian invention, mm. all that's come out of the Western world. So what happens is like an athlete burns out, they might get better on these rote memory tests, but actually get not happiness, not creativity, not innovation. Some of the things we might do well actually aren't as measured necessarily. I seem to, to feel that this is something that this is an ongoing thing we talk about a lot. I mean, are you going to school just to learn how to memorize things or are you right. going to learn how to do all of these other things, which in the long term are, are, are pretty damn important? I, I ran into and found it some, one of the volumes, there's three volumes to this report. I found a couple of things that are a little worrying as well. One of them is that for students who are from um, low socioeconomic backgrounds are called disadvantaged in this report, mm. they're called resilient. Uh, that's a different term than Australians typically use. Those kids def felt that their families didn't support them in school. When in Estonia and Albania and some other countries that are higher than us, they're smaller, but they're higher, mm. they felt those students who were resilient, meaning they were poor, had still had family support. So if you look at some of the countries that might be beating us in some of the areas we'd like to do better, the family support not being there ref is reflective of maybe attitudes in school, lack of study, maybe lack, lack of practice. And that's something we really have to do is increase our engagement with families and community because those students are feeling like they're separated out from their home and school life. Also the language and how we, how we yep. perpetrate that as well. Yeah, mm. and some students, our students who are disadvantaged and called resilient here, are doing a little bit better on things like cooperation, on things like uh, opportunities to sort of think creatively. Like it looks like schools are trying to do the Gonski stuff of integrating them in at the upper level. So the top students that would be called resilient are actually doing better than most of the rest of the world. So there's a bright spot with a couple of the dim spots that are out there. I think it, my own takeaway is we need a different design for schools. If we double down on the old stuff we've been doing, number one, we're going to bore kids to death. And number two, we'll get the same results. It's like, that's the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing and expecting a different yeah. result. Joe, we'll come back in a fortnight and do the same thing and probably yeah. get some different results yeah. as well. For the last <laughs> thanks, one for Mark. 2019, mate, thanks for your time. Yeah, Appreciate it. You. Our, you our professor of education, John Fischetti, right here at 2NURFM 103.7.